One of my biggest struggles when it comes to create digital artworks is with the stock photos. Today I want to show you that you can create an amazing story too with using only free stock photos. I usually spend more time in searching for the stock photos than working on the design itself. Let me know in the comments if that happens to you too. The background or the grass part started with this picture. And then I selected what I needed. Duplicate it a few times to have at the end a unique shape. I created that by uh, duplicating the same layer a few times. After that, I place it on the bottom area. The easiest part of this design was the sky area. So I just placed a few images, one on top of the other, and I end up with this result. When I created a city, I searched a lot for some interesting buildings. And then I took my time and I select all the buildings from those pictures. I started with this one and I duplicated a few times to cover that part with the same image. Then I started with the second part, which were the buildings that were in front of those ones. So I duplicated the same layer a few times to cover the center of the image. And then I placed the last ones in front of everything. And because I had this gap between the grass and the buildings, I placed the last one, the last image with the forest. Because we have three rows of buildings, a really important step is to separate them by using the depth of field. And for this, I use the Gaussian blur. So the first buildings have a 1.6 Gaussian blur. The buildings behind them, they have two pixel radius Gaussian blur. And those ones have a three pixel Gaussian blur. And I repeated the same steps to the copy of those buildings. To respect the realism, we will have to make the buildings that are far away uh, brighter than the buildings that are in front which will be darker. For that I'm going to use exposure adjustment layer. For the second row of buildings I'm going to use the same exposure but with different settings. And because the front buildings have a really different color than the rest I had to adjust that so I use a selective color and I have set the blending mode to color and I have modified the neutrals. And then I modified the lightning by using a levels adjustment layer. But that wasn't enough, so I have used another exposure adjustment layer. After I finished, I thought that this wasn't enough. So for the farthest buildings, I have added another exposure and I have made them even brighter. And to match them with the colors of the sky, the fastest uh, method that I found was to add an, a new layer and set the blending mode to color. And then with the brush tool and the flow really low, I started to paint by selecting a color from the sky and paint on those buildings with the appropriate color that the sky had in that area. And then in front of the buildings that are farther away, I had it added some fog and in front of everything, I have added more fog and now the city is complete. For the right building, I found this awesome photo select it and then place the building on the right side and I have added a mask and kept what I needed. Added a Gaussian blur. For the left tower I use this photo and I selected the water tower and uh, I had to flip it because I loved more this part and place it on the left side. And I have added a mask to match it better with the grass. Same thing happened with this car wreck. I select it and place it inside. I place it on the right side and I have added a mask. For the top area of my artwork, I found this really cool photo of those leaves and I selected them and placed them on the left top area. I had to search a lot for those uh, scrap images and uh, let me tell you that this part took a few hours. So I selected the parts that I needed from those pictures and let me show you how I build the structure. First I used uh, this one and behind it, behind it I placed uh, another one, behind them uh, I placed uh, this one and 
I have uh, added a mask and kept only the part that I wanted. Then this part of uh, that uh, wrecked car and inside it I place the last one. So this is how I place one on top of another and now the next important step was to match them all together. First thing, I started from the back and I started by adding a levels adjustment layer and made it darker. So I made that one darker and I continued with the other one and so on. And then I started to blur them one after another one. I started with the one from the back and I added some blur and then I moved on with the other one and so on. And then to all of that, I have added a mask and blend that structure with the grass. Then I added a selective color, which I have set to color. I have modified the neutrals and I made that part from the back as the same color as this one from the front. Here I wrote Mr. 23 Industries. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why, but I just wrote it there. I added a noise filter to make them look much much better together don't forget to check out this tutorial to see how you can add a noise filter too and then a really cool stuff that i did here was to add a rust that has the same color as uh, this building because i really love the colors of this building i created a new layer and i set it to color then i took a brush and i selected the color from this uh, building then I started to paint on some parts of uh, this structure after I painted around some parts I switched to the eraser tool and I used the same brush and I started to delete some parts to have that really cool uh, rust effect then at the end I added another levels adjustment layer and made everything even darker and since we are talking about uh, lights and colorizing, let me explain you how I did that to the rest of the images. So now to add shadows, I use levels. So create a new adjustment layer, which will be levels. Then I'm going to make the entire building darker, really, really dark, something like that. Then I'm going to press Ctrl and I to invert the mask and with another brush, and the white color selected I'm going to paint on some parts of this building to add some shadows and, and as you see I'm doing them really rough really strong so this was the first step that I did levels then I created a new new solid color adjustment layer for the lights which will be solid color and I'm going to use a really grayish yellow color then I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay and on the mask the same thing I'm going to invert the mask then with the same brush and the white color I'm going to paint on some parts and I'm adding some really cool light on that building we started from this and we finish with this now it looks much much better and I repeated the same things here with this uh, structure creating the shadows and the lights using the overlay layer Switching to the car, I have added a noise filter. I repeated the same steps to add some rust on the car as I did here. Then the steps, I have added the shadows using uh, levels. And then I have added the lights using a solid color set to overlay. And I repeated the same things here on the left tower. On the background, on the grass, I had to adjust the colors to match the rest. So. I started with a noise filter and with selective color. Then with levels I made some parts darker. In almost all my designs I use a cat because I really love cats. So I selected this one, I place it here on the structure, added a shadow underneath and added a Gaussian blur. Then the noise filter and the levels to make some parts darker and exposure to make some parts brighter and I have painted uh, some fur on the sides to match the lightning. For the Ellie part let me tell you that I searched like hours to find this really cool picture on DeviantArt 
a picture by uh, Nasia. I selected her and then I had to do something with the legs. The second great picture that I found uh, with Ellie Cosplay was uh, this one by Never Ending Above and uh, I had to use the backpack from this photo and also the legs. So um, I try to uh, move her around to match the right leg, added a mask and repeated a step with the other leg. Then on top of them I tried to mask and paint the parts of the jeans. Then I changed the color of her shirt to a different color and as I said from this picture I wanted the backpack so I selected the backpack and placed her here. Added a small mask to uh, hide the legs into the grass, adding a noise filter and levels to make her right side darker, selective color to match her with the rest of the background better, the lights which in this tutorial I used the overlay method. I painted some uh, hair and for the highlights I just painted on a normal layer and you should watch this uh, tutorial to see how to paint those highlights using just a normal layer nothing else. Then I used this really cute dog near her and I repeated the same steps. I added a shadow underneath her and underneath the dog also. And in the foreground I manually painted those flowers. Let me quickly show you how to do that. I created a new layer and I have used L Quartz brushes. You can search for them, they are free and I'm blown away by the quality of those brushes. So I use the plants, you have to use most of them because all of them uh, do something else. You start by using uh, orangey brown color or any color of course that you want. Just uh, paint and change the brush a few times. Search for another one if you want. And as I said she has a lot of uh, different plants here. I had to search a lot to see which one works best for my uh, design. And then just paint and don't forget to change the color to a different color to have um, different uh, you know colors here not just uh, one color uh, increase decrease the size and add more flowers and then when you finish just uh, blur it because they are in the foreground and I use Gaussian blur let's create a screenshot press ctrl R, shift and I right click convert it to a smart object and go to filter camera row filter I change my style for this artwork a lot because I'm not used with uh, this color scheme but I really loved it for this type of uh, design so you can copy my settings or use your own it's just uh, up to you you don't have to invest money to create cool art, but you really need to invest a lot of time in finding the right stock photos. The only problem with the free stock photos is that you really need to pay attention to the copyright issues if you ever decide to sell your art. If you love photo manipulation, you really need to watch this video. I am Mr. 23, see you next time.